The pandemic has been hard on many of us, but for those with autism, it has brought on a whole new set of challenges. Tiffany Tabkin from Empowering Kids Perham joins us today. Welcome back to the show, Tiffany. Yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely. I know you have some slides um, for us that you're going to kind of share with us. But one thing that, um, you know, we want to talk about, of course, is what is the biggest stressor when it comes to autism and the pandemic? Good question. So there are a few different stressors. And what I want to focus on today is that process of going from what we have been living and doing in this pandemic state to now that restrictions are lifted. What does that mean? Like this is going to turn into a big transition for individuals that really struggle with transitions. And so I just want to talk about why it's so difficult for these individuals and then what we can do to help support them. So if you look at the first slide, you'll kind of see that there are doors and a person on one side, and that is an individual with autism. They struggle with social communication, with interactions, with having routines and behaviors that are the same, but they also struggle with this thing called executive functioning. And I've kind of talked about it before, and it can be a big scary word, but one of the components of executive functioning is being able to think, see, and plan ahead. So individuals with autism are surrounded by these doors the way that their brain works it doesn't allow them to do that rapidly to do it quickly and to adjust very well so in a world they're surrounded by doors kind of wondering what's behind it i don't know what's behind it it could be scary let's not open it whereas individuals that are neurotypical are surrounded by windows and our brains can think and plan in a way that makes it easier for us to adjust what we're going to do and to adapt to these changes and transitions because we can see what's ahead and prepare for it so when an individual with autism is living a certain way during the pandemic and then we're shifting into going out and going to school and having these outings and being in crowds, their anxiety is going to increase because they're not able to see what that looks like. And executive functioning is like a muscle that you need to work and you need to keep doing and supporting. And they haven't had a lot of opportunities to be flexing that muscle and getting their strength back in this last year of the pandemic. So it can be really, really anxiety inducing. And that's when behaviors come up, such as I don't want to, this is stupid, I don't want to go, you can't make me, or maybe having other more intense meltdowns. Well, that makes perfect sense. And I mean, uh, the analogy there was wonderful. I totally get it. Um, so what can, what can we do to um, help these children? and adults. Yes, I love that you added the and adults on there as well, because autism and executive functioning deficits aren't something that end when your child is a teen or when your child turns 18. It's something that they have to learn strategies to cope with throughout their life. So if you look on the second slide, you'll see some strategies that you can do as a loved one, as a provider, as a teacher. First of all, understand their interests and desire to engage. It's much easier to go and do something that you have some buy-in in, um, that they want to do, to go to a park with a swing that they particularly enjoy, and slowly kind of stretching them and bringing them into this new world using their interests. Make it a gradual transition. Just do it a little bit at a time. Try to avoid big crowds right away. Go during off-peak hours to things that they may enjoy. Another one is to make a plan together. Always let them know in advance what you're going to be doing. Try not to spring changes on them right away. Uh, another strategy is to look up things on a website. They're so visual and again seeing those pictures gives them that window. What it's going to look like, what it's going to be, what should I wear, what are people going to be doing. So websites are great, great resources and even googling different pictures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That makes another Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Another one is to discuss the strategies they can use to manage how they're feeling. Like, what can you do if you're having these big feelings? What's going to be 
our escape plan? How are we going to exit? Is the car a safe place? What's going to be in the car that's going to comfort you? And then the last thing is to always advocate for your loved one. When you go somewhere, let them know if you need accommodations or if you have questions or requests. Yeah, absolutely. Advocating for them. I love that. So, uh, Tiffany, how can people get a hold of you if they have more questions? So we have a website, empoweringkidsperm.org. You can just Google it and you'll find our information. And we have a Facebook page and Instagram as well. All right. Thank you so much for being with us today. Coming up on today's show, we're going to talk to the experts on the National Child Abuse Prevention Month.